important. I could spend the next few minutes of my life and yours giving you jumped up motivational content, helping you to feel just a little bit better in your everyday stressful stretched life. I could feed you that hit of positivity and inspiration. I could play some lovely music and I could tell you how amazing it is to be alive. But then what fucking happens as soon as something in everyday life comes along and takes the wind out of your sails? The way that you're gonna feel differently and the way that you're gonna feel inspired all the time, or at least most of the time, and energized and up for it and have your mojo in life is by making some changes in the way that you approach your everyday mental, emotional, and physical health and well-being. That's what I'm gonna share with you in this video. So buckle up, stay tuned, watch this, and it will help. Hey, how's it going? Tommy G here. In this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about anxiety. Now, I've done my absolute best here to map out this point that I wanna bring across to you, which, once you get your head around, it actually has the potential to change your whole life. I know that sounds like a pretty extreme thing to say, especially in the first minute of a video, but it's true. If you can get your head around this equation, then you can approach your daily life in a way that will reduce the amount of anxiety that you experience. Now, specifically, I'm talking about the amount of unnecessary anxiety, because uh, let me kind of like paint a picture for you. Anxiety is a state that we get ourselves in when we are worried about something possibly happening happening in the future, something that we don't want to happen, something that could leave us feeling exposed or intimidated or scared or embarrassed, like something that we might get wrong, something that we might let someone down, um, that we might like be shown up, like all of these things, we might not be good enough, we might not fit in. These are all like a lot of mites, right? A lot of things that could happen. And I guess it's like looking at a million pieces of rice and only a couple of them are like red and those are the ones that could go wrong and the hundreds of thousands of possibilities that could happen that where things don't go wrong and actually are really right, they're still there but for some reason we're fixating on the bit that might go wrong and that's causing us to feel anxiety. Now I'm gonna sort of teach you um, why I believe that we can take control of some of the unnecessary anxiety and I'm sure that you'd agree, especially if you are someone who feels anxious on a daily basis and if you are then welcome it's good that you're here because you're going to learn you're going to grow and this is going to serve you it is a real troublesome problem out there and we are challenged every day by the world that we live in uh, i do believe that we are stressed and stretched far more than we ever have been as a human race but that is why we have a lot of opportunity because we live in this world where you can watch a video about anxiety and helping your anxiety on youtube on the internet which you couldn't do 20 years ago. You would just be suffering with it. So at least, you know, you have the ability to learn and grow. That's why you're here. So thank you for being here. I commend you for that. And now we're gonna get into the lesson. So um, what we have here is ultimately anxiety, our feelings that we project into the future. Feelings that we have about things going wrong. They haven't actually happened yet. Like I challenge you right now to think about something that you used to feel anxious about. Go back to that moment remember what, the, what those feelings felt like, and then see if you feel them about that same thing now. The chances are if it's already happened, you already knew what happened, you already know the story and how it went, you don't feel anxious about it anymore. Like those of you that drive, you think about your driving test now, it's not as bad, right? Because you've done it, you know what happens, you passed, you have got your driving license, but at the time you felt massive anxiety towards that thing because it hadn't happened yet and you had an awareness that you might fail, that it might not work, that you might have to do it again, that you know, all these, all these things. So anxiety does disappear after the fact because we know what happened. We don't need to feel anxious about it because the story was already written. So they're feelings that we project into the future. Now I want you to imagine that there are two types of anxiety that we can feel or places that, they, that this feeling comes from. First of all, we have our everyday situations. These red circles here are everyday situations that we can feel anxious about. So for example, going to that party or having to do your homework on time or like turning up and having to give a presentation at work or going on a date for the first time or meeting your girlfriend or boyfriend's parents for the first time or it could be going somewhere that you've never been before it could be going to an appointment it could be like 
posting something on social media that you're not sure like what it's going to do, how it's going to go down. Um, there's like a multitude of things that it could be, situations that you could feel anxiety towards. And I'm sure that you have your own version of these things, maybe even some of those things are happening today. Um, because these situations can happen every day. And the thing about these is that they can uh, connect to each other and they can also be really different, really different on a daily basis. Now you'll notice the arrows left and right. Basically, when we approach any situation, we take like these little thought processes where we basically look into our past and what we know about what's real to us and we find reasons and explanations of why we feel like we feel. So we might go, okay, well the last time I went to a party, it was really scary, I didn't enjoy myself, people like judged what I was wearing and I felt like really insecure. So we're going into the past and we're taking an unhappy feeling or an unhappy recollection or an unhappy memory or awareness from the past and that's causing us to feel anxious in the future. Now every time we find like a reason to feel anxious in the past, guess what? We'll feel anxious about it, right? But if we go into the past and we go, you know what, last time it wasn't so bad, or last time actually I quite enjoyed that conversation I had with that guy, or last time like I came home and I was like, man, no big deal, like it was fine, right? If you bring that memory to the here and now and project that into the future, there will be less chance of you feeling anxious about it. But it's having to go through this mindset, this process of thinking this way, otherwise nothing changes, otherwise nothing happens, otherwise you're always going to be living right here in the middle and you're going to be living in the feeling. So we can go back into the past, we can find a positive reason or a positive explanation that we can use as evidence to project into the future and that can help us with our anxiety in these situations. This here is always an unknown because it hasn't happened yet. That's what freaks us out about these things. We don't know what's going to happen and we fear the worst. But what if you could project the best into the future instead of fearing the worst? You would take control of your situation, you'd be able to learn every time something happened, and you'd be able to grow, and you'd be able to adapt, and you'd be able to move forwards, and not have to hide away, not have to worry, not have to like, just fucking waste loads of energy on being really anxious about something which really is not no big deal in the grand scheme of things. So as you can see on the left here, we've got three circles of different colours, and they're bigger, but they also apply the same rule of looking into the past, finding either a happy or an unhappy or a positive or negative explanation, meaning or memory, bringing it into the now and then projecting it into the future to get an unknown outcome. The differences with these are when we have problems in one of these three areas, it magnifies the amount of anxiety that we feel on a daily basis. Here is where the real secret lives. These areas of our life are our health, our relationships, is that gonna fit? Just, and our career. Now these are the three main areas of life and if we have problems or cracks or if we're in transition in any of these three areas, then what happens is this process on a daily basis actually gets amplified. It becomes a lot worse than it actually is. Now here's the real lesson today. We could focus on this all day long. We could focus on the day-to-day -day situations, building up courage, building up resilience, building up enough about you to go into your daily stuff, parties, meetings, meeting new people, turning up to this place, like doing your homework on time, playing well at your sport, being good enough for people, like all of these things that we get worried about, turning up to a public place, what will people think, you know, all that. We could focus on that all day long, but if you've got unresolved shit here, then this is always gonna be like heavy. So the actual way to reduce unnecessary anxiety is to look at what's going on in your health. So how are you with your physical health, your mental health, your emotional health, what loose ends are there that need tying up, what things should you be doing to look after yourself better, perhaps you're in transition, maybe you've had a, a spell of bad health and now you're on the, on the repair, or maybe 
you're like, uh, you know you need to go and start that healthy living plan, but you just haven't got around to it yet. You're eating shit and you feel like shit because you're eating shit and you're not healthy, you're not sleeping well. All of these things here will amplify this. You'll get ratty, you'll get stressed. That all adds to your anxiety and makes it very hard for you to focus and project good feelings into the future. So health, that's pretty straightforward. The same goes for relationships. If you're in transition, so maybe someone just broke up with you or you've got like less friends than you'd like to have and you need to meet some new people. Maybe you've moved to a new area and you don't really know many people. Maybe your social circles aren't very positive and you're looking to kind of surround yourself with more positive people. Maybe your relationship is about to like take a completely different direction. Maybe you're about to have kids. Maybe you're into a new relationship. All of these things are transitions in this area which will amplify everyday solutions and the amount, so everyday situations and the amount of anxiety that you feel on a daily basis. So these things need our attention as well as these things. But what we do is we tend to just ignore them and we tend to think that we've got everything under control when really we haven't and we need to give it time and attention. Two really big things for the answer. Time and attention. The problem is, of course, that our time and our attention is being taken away from us by, like, bullshit things, like things on your mobile phone, like games, like apps, like social media, like other people's agendas, and they're stealing your time and attention, taking it away from where it needs to be, giving you this like drug of instant gratification where you feel like you need to hit a hit every five seconds, checking your, checking your red dot on your notifications, getting that hit, checking your games or gambling or whatever it is, or like social media and swiping and all that. Like that's the instant gratification that you're being fed. And so your time and attention has been taken away from you and you can't focus it on these things because you haven't got any left because you've had to use it on all this. Now you can see why people are struggling, right? Because if you don't create the space in your life to put time and attention in yourself, like these three things here, this is ultimately yourself. And if you aren't spending time on yourself, which is your health, your relationships and your career, which is like your contribution, if you like, to the world around you, then you're going to struggle with these things here. So let's look at our last section, career. You could be in transition for jobs. You could be struggling. You could be financially struggling as well because that's where this comes into. Finances comes into this. So you could be like in debt. You could be pe like bills everywhere. You could be in transition of job. You lost your job. You could have been on benefits. You could be like doing really well but like you're sh spending your money really badly. These things here again, they will amplify the simple everyday situations and they will feel heavier, they will feel harder and you will feel more unnecessary anxiety. You're only human, right? So you have these things. Like if we were to just focus on this, imagine if we could just focus on this here for like even just a week, man. Like when was the last time that happened? If you could just remove yourself from all this distraction, all these things take like a holiday, which is what people do, but they don't focus their time on these things. Instead, they're so knackered from all this that they go into like this sort of recovery coma for a week, eat all you can eat buffets, drink sangria, sit on the beach, and then they come home and they feel like they still need a holiday because they need longer than that and they need to spend time on these things. So it might not be practical to take like a self, like, retreat or boot camp or vacation but what we can do is start integrating practices into our everyday life where we can put time and attention into our health and development of our health our relationships and the development of those and our career or contribution to the world in order to feel more fulfilled in ourself care less worry less about the unnecessary anxiety be able to manage our everyday situations with like swagger and confidence and be all right with things and be calmer about these things and notice the 9700 or 970,000 other grains of rice that aren't a problem and be able to project a more positive message into the future that's all possible like this is this is like a whole day's worth of training put into like a 15 minute video, right? So I'll move very quickly with this. 
please do comment, let me know your thoughts, let me know your questions, I'm here to help. Um, even you know the 10 people that do watch these videos, let me know you're here because then I can help you, right? Um, because ultimately the answer is to look into the past and learn. You have to learn from your past, right? All these arrows, learn from the past, learn what went well, learn how you can draw strength from things you've already done, learn from what you already know, and then not let it define your future. Define your future. Because the middle here, this is control, self-control. This is where you are able to choose how you project into the future, whether it's good or bad, whether it's confident or whether it's doubt, whether it's love or whether it's pain, whether it's trust, or whether it's fear, you can project what you would like to project into the future. That would change how you feel. You'll be noticing the good, you'll be noticing the positive. You won't just be fixating on the anxious problems that could happen. You're learning from the past. There's no such thing as failure. It's only win or learn, right? That's the past message. That you only win or learn and then do not let that define you because the past does not equal the future. You have the control to shape it with what you learn from the past and then how you choose to project your time and attention into the future. So I hope that by watching this video, you're able to just treat yourself a little bit kind, more kindly, that you can know that you're only human and you've just been sort of sucked into this vortex, this sort of trap, this slipstream that everyone's getting sucked into because they're all getting distracted. Their time and attention is just getting stretched and stressed out and you're only human so it's not your fault this just kind of the way it is at the moment but it is your fault if you let it carry on it is your fault if you watch this video and you don't change the way you think that's all you have to do here is just start the like, secret is this start spending more time and attention on your health your relationships and your career in learning from the past drawing strength from your lessons that you've learned, whether it's like tough lessons or great lessons, and then applying them into the future with self-belief in these everyday situations to remove unnecessary anxiety, change the way you feel about the future, take your wins, take your lessons, but do not let the past define your future and you will start feeling better. It's kind of as easy as that, right? But uh, I know that that's a lot to take in. So. Let me know your thoughts on what you've taken from this video. I've done my best here to teach you, so I hope that you've enjoyed this video. And I would look forward to reading your comments. Please do tag a friend, share it with someone who you think it would help, and I'll speak to you again next time, because I'm just gonna keep giving you these lessons so that you can move forwards with your life. Thanks.